I have done Camp America for two years in a row now and every single year there are people that come and leave either within the first week or throughout the summer. Sometimes it's for personal reasons and they have to go back and they don't want to leave but some people get there and realise this is not for them. Some people were not ready for it and I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I mean it's a lot and it's genuinely terrifying when you get there and you're like what what on earth is going on here? This is really odd. So this video is not it's not intended to scare you but also it kind of is a little bit. If you watch this video and you're like good god no thank you then hopefully i've saved you the trouble but i'm a firm believer that even if these things do scare you or do make you think maybe it's not for me if you have the possibility to do it i think do it anyway i may be biased but i just think this is an opportunity to grow massively in a new place in a new country it's it's a great opportunity so if you have if you have it available to you and you're thinking about it don't let these reasons scare you let them inform your decision as to whether you go. I've asked friends, my boyfriend, people that have been before, I've asked them what aspects of camp would scare people off and have scared people off and what traits in people have made it harder for them. And so I've created a list and I'm gonna tell you these things. Once again, these are not reasons not to go. I still think you should go. But if you're on the edge and I'm not sure and one of these are like a sticking point for you, then maybe give it a bit more thought. I do want to add also a disclaimer that not all camps are the same obviously so the schedules will be different the rules will be different the time off the time on will be different the camp i went to was very full-on flon <laughs> we literally worked like every day almost all day every day we had like an hour off in the day two hours off in the evening sometimes depending if you're on duty or not and then we had like four 24 hour off days across the two months that we were there so it is very full on but some of them are weekday camps just monday to friday and you've got a weekend off some of them are day camps so the kids leave in the evening and you've got the whole evening and the, until the next morning off so it really depends where you go. Take that into consideration, very important. Number one, you're an introvert. You'd assume if you go to camp, you have to be massively extroverted. You're around people all the time. It's America, okay? We all know what that means. These people, they're scary. Not for the reasons we're all thinking right now. They're very animated, they're very loud. It's a culture that you're not used to. Because you're around kids a lot as well, it's a kid's summer camp, it's heightened. Fair enough, you'd assume that you have to be an extrovert to go there. And I would say it is better suited to extroverts. Me, myself, I'm an introvert through and through. Well, apparently not, apparently I'm an ENFP. Wild, didn't know that. I always consider myself an introvert. I like time alone, that's where I recharge. I have to admit, first summer was rough for me in some ways because it's just a lot of people all the time and it's new, but you're it's like uni, you know freshers at uni? If you've not done freshers at uni, it's exactly like that in that you are living with new people and constantly meeting new people. As much as now I'm like, that excites me. At the time, that was horrendous. But you you get into it. It is a shock at first, I'm not gonna lie. If you are a true through and through intro introvert, it will be a rocky road, but it will be a road of growth and making new friends. And I think it's a brilliant idea if you are an introvert. Introvert is not a reason not to go. Unfortunately, sorry, you have to go. And if you are an extrovert, you're in the right place. Number two is something that my boyfriend who's also been for two years brought up. And I'm thinking, was this me at one point? But if you're addicted to your phone, to social media, to the laptop, to whatever it is, but to a point where like, you don't think you could put it away in a locker and live happily, <laughs> which is concerning, but it's the world we live in today. It's not the place for you because you're not allowed your phone well i mean maybe some very specific camps allow you to have your phone so i would look into that because maybe maybe you'll be allowed that but you definitely won't be allowed to use it all the time so if your screen time is upwards of eight hours and you'd like to keep it that way it's not going to happen because realistically you'll probably get i don't know two or three hours a day max to actually go on your phone and most of that time off you won't want to be spending on your phone i'm a massive well as you probably can tell a massive youtube nerd i love watching youtube so it was weird but it was exactly what i wanted like it wasn't i did didn't not expect it. I was expecting to put my phone away and not be on it and be immersed in the experience and I think that's what makes it such a good experience. So if you don't think you can do that, sorry, but if you can, do it and you won't regret it at all. It's a fabulous idea. Okay, this is two points in one and it's revolving a routine. If you're the type of person 
who doesn't like to get up at a certain time every day, doesn't like alarms, setting alarms, likes to sleep in, or likes to stay up really late, and you want to keep it that way, <laughs> maybe don't go to camp. They have a structured routine, and obviously you're, you're working there every single day, so your routine will stay to their routine, and that means waking up at around seven o'clock in the morning, maybe later, I don't know, maybe some camps do earlier, that would be wild, but it's around seven to eight in the morning that you'll be getting up every day. You will be going to bed around 10 to midnight depending on where you work. If you don't like that kind of routine or if you have your own routine and it doesn't fit at all within that scape, scape? scope, scale, it doesn't fit within that, full stop, perhaps that doesn't work for you. You can't, you know, negotiate with the camp director about your sleeping hours. It's very much like we get up at this time, breakfast is at this time, you need to bring your kids to breakfast at this time. Point two, demanding work hours. I haven't had me a many, a wider variety of jobs and I know I'm coming at this from a very first world standpoint. Childcare is a hard job. Living with children as a young adult and looking after them every single day is a hard job. For around two months you will be living and working with these children who you will grow to love. They will become a part of you but at the same time <laughs> you're a young adult who is probably tired, very tired, and you are working 24-7. Take that into consideration. Some camps, I know a girl who went to a camp and it was a weekday camp so like the kids came in mon on Monday, they left on Friday evening and they had the weekend. Some camps are like that. Some camps are just day camps. You have, as soon as they leave in the evening, you have the rest of your evening till the morning that they come next day. You have that time off. But a lot of camps are sleep away for like two months and you are expected to be on duty almost all the time unless you have a day off, which is can be few and far between. I'm gonna be honest. There is a very non-flexible routine that you have to stick to and ridiculously demanding hours. It's worth it, don't get me wrong. If you want to know why it's worth it, watch all of my other videos, but it's not for everyone. <laughs> Number four is possibly really trivial like maybe it doesn't matter at all to anyone but the weather i know some people who genuinely cannot go for a week of hot weather they go on holiday for a week and they're like i just want to be back in the cool back in england depending on where you go most likely in america their summers can be very hot like really hot which is kind of weird because when i line up where we are it just doesn't feel like it makes sense but it's very hot and can be very stormy and humid and these it, it rarely lets up my first summer was so hot all the time it rained maybe twice it's a lot you sweat all the time it's sweltering bearing in mind all the other things if you're not good with heat <laughs> a summer camp might not be the one because you are outside all the time you are in the sun all the time you need to be hydrated you need to be sun lotioned up that one may be trivial but like i i feel like it was worth mentioning as a factor because i feel like sometimes you don't consider this because you're used to this weather this miserable miserable weather which i love actually to be quite honest maybe you just assume that it'll be like england but no <laughs> number five is something that i personally i would say i struggled with this a, a fair amount and i still do like it's something that never left me and it's something that still <sighs> irks me a little bit. If you're a germaphobe or you find yourself to be very particular about organisation and cleanliness and stuff like that, that's going to be tested to its limits, like to its limits. Um, you're, you're living in essentially the middle of nowhere in cabins um, with a lot of children, especially if you're with the younger kids as well. Like they don't necessarily know how to clean very well, at least in my camp. The, the job is for the kids to work together as a cabin to clean the cabin but if you have little kids you will be helping doing all of that or they will have not done a very good job of it but yeah also like meal times there's a lot of communal food area plural not just one personally as a little bit of a germaphobe i did struggle with certain things they made me want to pull my skin off a little bit but that's okay i think it actually is just essentially exposure therapy for a lot of things for me like i'm much more open to things than i used to be i will walk barefoot in certain scenarios now also, I used to never kind of like, I still don't a lot of the time. Everyone who went to camp with me would know. Communal pools freak me out a lot. Like I'm highly, highly suspicious of any bodies of water that are contained, that people are constantly in and out of, especially children. <laughs> Which is why I chose to go to summer camp in America with children. Yeah, so I didn't go in the pool a lot first summer. I went in slightly more this summer, I think. Maybe I didn't, maybe I'm lying. It is kind of exposure therapy. And it isn't completely debilitating. Like it's, even if you are a massive germ germaphobe, you can still do it. I think it's a good idea to go regardless, but I think you should keep, take it into account. Your little special things, routines and stuff will be swept away and you'll be exposed to a lot of uncomfortable positions <laughs> if you don't like germs, but that's okay. I, if I can do it, you can do it. Number six is patience. You're working with kids. Once again, how many times can I say it? You need to be patient. 
with them you can't lose your temper with them obviously it depends what age group you are but every age group will have you'll find it hard like with young kids you have to help a lot you have to do a lot of stuff for them with the older kids there's more attitude there's more drama there's more tension to deal with and sometimes you do just have to sit there and be like oh <laughs> Mm. And I personally am not a very patient person. Everyone knows this about me. Um, but once again, I genuinely think unless you are a particularly angry person, patience is learnt. And even if you're 20 going into this, 21, every opportunity is a place to learn for anyone. Depend not like it's not dependent on whether you're a, you're a kid at summer camp or you're a counselor at summer camp. We're all learning together to be people. You will learn some major les lessons. Lessons. So I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing for applying to Camp America. Obviously, I wouldn't lead with that if in your application. Also, that being said, it's not just the kids that will test your patience. You will work with lots of people, lots of different people with different ideas on how to do things. You need patience with your co-counselors, with your supervisors, with the bosses, with the people who run really niche areas of things like everyone's working together and a lot of the time they're new people in this environment either alongside you or you've been there a while and they're new like it's just a patient place otherwise things go wrong so i think it's a good place to learn for that number seven is if you're a sensitive soul someone who can be offended very easily or embarrassed very easily you feel the eyes of the world always on you that kind of feeling that may make it harder but i don't think once again it's necessarily reason not to go you will be around people all the time there are a lot of awkward icebreaker situations that you'll find yourself in orientation is just making a fool of yourself for a week straight also learning a lot of stuff and doing seminars and stuff but it's mostly just playing really embarrassing games there's a game that we play called send me and you are split into groups and someone at the front goes send me the person who has the weirdest hidden talent or something like that or who has the best joke once again it's like doing drama gcse but like in front of loads of people and for two months straight. I think it's a great way to grow and learn. So I'm not even gonna, I don't think that's an excuse in any situation not to go. You've gotta be thick skinned and you've gotta learn to be embarrassed sometimes in your life and that will come with time and this will just speed it up a little bit. Another thing would be the wildlife. If you are so scared of spiders and snakes and weird flying bugs that you find yourself paralyzed by it. I don't wanna say don't go because I still think go all the time. Research maybe where you're going and what you may come across. I have to say over the time that I've been at camp, I have seen some weird things and I am very scared of spiders, even the little money spiders. But I did at one point at, in my camp career sleep in a bed which i knew underneath was a massive wolf spider because we couldn't get it out that was actually really scary for me and there's snakes but i'm fine with snakes so i don't care so much but there are snakes there are okay trigger warning there is gonna be a snake there was a snake in a cabin in the boys cabin and there were also snakes all around the mini golf course which i kind of love just be aware of it and maybe look into where you're going and what wildlife is there but i don't think it's a reason not to go final thing i would say is if you're very particular about your diet it is not impossible to go to camp and have them cater exactly what you need them to in terms of food vegetarian vegan pescatarian like all of that stuff that you can specify and a lot of camps are very helpful in that area but there are some things that you might want to consider like what are their vegan op op options like it's great that they provide it but maybe it's just the same thing every single night and maybe you don't want that and that's totally fine i would do your research into that because i know quite a few people who not even are vegetarian or vegan but have very specific diet and issues with te textures and stuff and certain things that they just can't they won't eat and they can't eat because of years of not doing that they won't do it they're not going to start a camp and that's totally fine some of these things the exposure therapy is enough for food habits i feel like that's a whole nother ball game and that's nothing to it shouldn't hinder you but i definitely think you should consider where you're going and maybe get in contact with them and ask for actual examples so basically what i've given you just then is a load of reasons not to go that aren't actually reasons not to go but they are things to consider when you are applying for things Things. things to consider being how much time off you get whether you get time on your phone how hot it is where you're going what bugs are native to the area things like what the routine is what food they serve i hope you found that insightful i have made loads of well i say loads like maybe four videos on camp america i have other videos regarding camp america so if you're cur curious they're out there but if you have any questions do ask because 
I love to help and there will be other people who will be in the comments who can probably also help you and it's best to get all the perspectives possible and I would 100% recommend going and watching people that aren't me who have also been to camp to get multiple different perspectives because that's how you'll know. I know I praise the experience and I completely and wholeheartedly believe that everyone if they have the possibility to go should go regardless of who they are or what their habits are or what their you know tendencies are or whether they're impatient or not i think it's a great experience but there are also some people who have had terrible experiences and i'm not saying that's necessarily because of them or because of the camp i think sometimes there is just the wrong match of people in the wrong place at the wrong time but that's very few and far between if you look at the amount of people that do actually go every single year the amount of people that go back every single year it's it's not that common so i wouldn't be too scared by that but yeah i just think do your research because that's, that's how you're gonna know but also do go because you'll love it okay thank you for watching and i'll be back at some point with more information on probably the same topic predictable as always Bye.